Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cameras and Coffee. Yes, I know it is a rare week. I have had the time and the, the content is interesting enough to do a second one of these. First up and very important, a huge thank you to Analog Forever magazine. Last August, yes, this is how long this has been on my to-do list and how underwater uh, my schedule has been for very long. Uh, last August, Analog Forever sent me one of their back issues, their winter 2020 issue, to read and look through, and I, I am very impressed. The, the quality of images, and the quality of content is spectacular, and uh, well, the publication quality is really top-notch. This is a wonderful, wonderful printed magazine, and the images are very well curated. They're very inspiring, <clears throat> and if you are, they sent me this gratis, no strings, not looking for me to even mention it in a video, but I wanted to because it is, uh, it, it is absolutely wonderful, and I've gotten a lot of an enjoyment out of re reading it and looking at the photos, so for those of you who are always looking for photographic inspiration, Analog Forever is one of those magazines that's absolutely worth looking at. If you're looking for others, Shots is another one of my favorite magazines as well. So both of them are right up there, top-notch uh, photo curation and, and good photos to choose from. So they didn't pay me to say that. I just wanted to do that because it was a very thoughtful thing for them to send me, and um, I've, I've gotten a lot out of it. So... On to today's news about Nikon. So you might have seen this if you read Petapixel, Nikon's new $14,000 lens, a lens all of us are just going to shake our couches out, of, you know, shake the spare change out of our couches for to buy, um, comes with a warning about the uh, magnets in it. So the, basically the way that the, the lens works and Honestly, I was thinking about this the other week. Like, I hadn't heard of this lens at that point, and I was thinking, like, why don't lens makers use magnets for their autofocus system? They're very accurate. They would not require the mechanical spin up and spin down time of geared systems. And you could just say, well, we'll have magnets in a row here. If you make them very, very small, then you just have the elements of the internal focus go back and forth. It didn't even occur to me, of course, that. Magnets have their own inherent risk for people with pacemakers or other medical devices. So I'm reading this, this Petapixel article, and of course, link in the description. It's called, it was released on March 7th. It's written by Michael Zhang, and it's called Nikon's New Lens Tech is a Danger to Medical Devices. Basically, the, the point of the article is that Nikon's Silky Swift voice coil motor SSVCM uh, autofocus system uses magnets, and so it, the, the instruction manual contains a warning about using it if someone has a pacemaker. So uh, it's it's a fascinating system that that has a series of magnets that then moves the internal focusing or the internal focusing elements back and forth, it, it's, and that should, in theory, be more power efficient than would be a mechanical drive, especially for a larger lens like this. So I think it's a really neat and innovative idea. And also, if you have a medical device, I figured it was worth pointing out that this might not be the lens that you want to go out and hold up against your chest when you're not shooting it. Now, some things, some asterisks, I, I will say I am not an expert in magnetic science. My general relationship with magnets is how do they work? I don't know. But um, I did start researching magnetic power before I sat down to record this. And according to pacemaker manufacturers, let me pull up the exact one I was looking at. Um, reading an article, I'll also link this in the description from KJ Magnetics. They cited um, 
Boston Scientific and one of the other pacemaker, Medtronic. And according to Medtronic, um, a five gauze limit, which is one half of a millitesla uh, for a direct current magnetic field could affect a pacemaker's operation. Now the risk with having a strong magnet near a pacemaker is that the pacemaker could put itself into magnetic protection mode, which is something that pacemakers, as I understand them, use for when someone gets an MRI. It's not, I don't think, intended to stay on for a long time, the magnetic protection mode, that is. And so every article I, I read indicated that going into magnetic protection mode can affect the ability of a pacemaker to do its job. So what is five gauze or one half of a millitesla? I don't know. Is that as, honestly, nothing I could find would tell me whether or not that is as strong as a fridge magnet, half as strong, twice as strong. I, is it is it a fridge magnet that can hold a postcard or a fridge magnet magnet that can hold like three pages i don't know uh, or a menu i don't know uh so i don't have a good gauge of how strong in in mag in, uh, a mag a millitesla is it's it's always translated into newtons i also don't have a good sense of how strong a newton is in terms of like can i Pull, how, many, how many newtons of force could I pull apart? Like I could uh, have a better sense of that. Anyway, so, so I found that guidance from K&J Magnetics. Another important thing to bear in mind with magnets is that they, the magnetic field weakens with distance. That's why if you take a magnet and you hold it up to your fridge, it'll stick there. But if you take a magnet and step a foot back and let go of it, it's just going to fall unless it's a super powerful magnet because the magnetic field weakens with distance, right? So what does that mean about the, um, the Nikon lens? Nowhere that I found does Nikon indicate how many milliteslas of magnetic force that the, their lens is putting out or how far away from a, uh, a, a pacemaker it would have to be to get the magnetic force down to that half a millitesla or five gauze limit. And honestly, good on Nikon for not going into any sort of detail like that, because it's better just to stay safe and have a blanket warning that says, don't use this if you have a pacemaker, rather than going into any sort of depth. So um, just a heads up for those of you who have pacemakers and are sitting around thinking about buying a lens or a car, that um, this $14,000 lens is contraindicated for people with those pacemakers. So um, is it is it some, I would say that I have to imagine that if Nikon was, or the legal team at Nikon, was actively losing sleep over the potential of these magnets interfering with a pacemaker during the course of normal shooting or whatever, um, I got to imagine that they would engrave that warning on the lens barrel rather than just putting it inside of the instruction manual or a press release about the, uh, the new magnetic voice coil drive. So it's something to be wary of if you do plan to use this lens and you have a pacemaker. I, I couldn't tell you with certainty how, how great of a risk that it actually would be to you though. So any rate, I thought that was an interesting bit of news and also very exciting to see that magnet magnetic internal focusing is something that's being developed by Nikon and I have to imagine by the other makers as well because that is something that will be a huge, huge game changer in the speed and the accuracy of autofocus systems for future cameras. So have a good day, everybody, and I will see you in the next Cameras and Coffee. Right, Steinbeck. Right. Do you want to give me a kiss? No? Okay. You don't have to. Yes, you're a good boy. <laughs>